next video. Today we're going to answer a question that I've gotten a lot over the years, and that is how do you cook? Do you cook in your van? Is it safe to cook in your van? Uh, what kind of foods do you cook in your van? How much will it cost me to cook in my van? So that's what I'm going to do. Today I'm going to answer uh, as many of those questions as I can. We'll begin a longer series on how uh, the kind of foods I cook and how much they cost. That will be an ongoing thing. This will cover the basics of cooking in your van. I moved into my van because I had just gone through a divorce and my income, while adequate as a family, when it's had to support two households, it could not. So I moved into the van and eliminated, eliminated my house payments. So on my part, I still, of course, was support, paying to support my ex-wife and the kids. Um, and so I learned right away that if I didn't cook, I was going to spend a lot of money every month going out to eat. And, I, and that defeated the whole purpose. I wanted to be able to save money, at least to survive. Uh, and so I decided, well, I had to cook. Now, I've been a camper and a backpacker all my life. I mean, I've always had uh, my first stove, uh, backpacking stove was a Svea 123. Some of you will know what that means. Still around, I believe. Great little stove. Um, so I knew how to cook. I had always gone camping. I would had Coleman stoves, one and two burners. So I knew how to cook. This was just going camping. That's what people fail to realize. When you move into a van or a car, you're just going camping, except it's going camping for the rest of your life. So whatever you did to cook while you were going camping, you do while you're living in your van or your car. Of course, you have an RV, you have a whole system, you don't need any of this. But let me cover the basics so it's really simple. Uh, here is what I do, have done nearly all of my cooking in the last uh, 16 years. I've lived in a van now for 16 years and this is how I've done my cooking, on a Coleman's propane camping stove. This is a one burner and I love this thing. You can see it's very broad, very flat, very low to the ground. So it it's not in the least bit tipsy. I've been very, very pleased with this stove. Now you can get a two burner stove if you cook enough to need two burners. It'll be much larger. It would still fit on here, I believe, but I don't need a two burner. I just use the one. In fact, now I'm cooking with a microwave and we'll cover microwave cooking in a little bit. On, in future videos, not today. Uh, and that is sup has taken over pretty much for cooking on this. But I'm going to tell you how to cook on this because most of you won't have a microwave. At any rate, I love these. This is what I recommend. It's $32 on Amazon. I'll put a link in at the bottom. One thing you'll notice right away is there's no green bottle here. Instead, there is a hose that goes down and around. Um, and I have a, a two gallon bottle, a two and a half gallon bottle underneath this unit. When I built this van, I built this unit to, uh, to be my kitchen, my cooking center. So I got a flat area for the stove. Now for cooking, just cooking, a green bottle will work fine. But I use this for uh, heat as well. And you can't use green bottles for heat. It's too expensive. So it has to be hooked up. If you're just cooking, uh, you wouldn't have to bother with any of that, just the green bottles. A green bottle will last you a week or two, depending on how much you're cooking. If you're cooking elaborate meals, it may go faster, but I can't imagine a green bottle wouldn't last a week cooking and doing the kind of cooking that I do, really simple stuff. Um, I can't imagine it wouldn't last a week or two and maybe more. Uh, cooking's not much in propane, so if you burn a bottle a week, that's $3 in fuel. Uh, if you get them at Walmart, and that's not bad. So that's how I do that. Uh, this just sits here. It lives here uh, all the time. But before I had this van and this shelf unit for my kitchen, um, I have I can kick, cook on outside. You can carry a table and cook outside if you don't want to cook inside. I estimated I've cooked I cooked a meal a day at least for uh, ten years. Um, that's a minimum. Uh, that's uh, that's four thousand meals I have cooked probably between three and 4,000 meals inside a van. I have never had the slightest problem, and I don't have the slightest problem doing it. Uh, that says somewhere on here, do not use inside, but, uh, and, and so that is the safety rule, and you should follow them. And like I've told you before, I have magical powers that allow me to cook on this inside and use it for heat, and I don't die. But I have magical powers and you don't. Ha 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 ha. So my advice to you is not to cook inside, cook outside. 
uh, unless you want to take that risk completely on your own. I'm not taking any liability. You're breaking safety rules if you cook inside. Uh, to me, the, the risk is so minor, I don't hesitate. Again, three to 4,000 meals cooked inside a van. Um, you're, uh, what's the meal going to take you to cook? Five minutes? Um, Ten minutes? And, and how much propane and carbon, uh, carbon monoxide could you possibly put in here if it was all carbon monoxide? So I just think it's a minor issue, and it's not something I'm going to give worry any thought to. You should not cook inside the van because you will almost certainly die if you do. I have a shelf, so I have the top, and I have about a six-inch shelf, which I measured to hold all the stuff I needed to hold. So I just have a standard, you know, this is just a standard uh, plastic box from Walmart. You got to have a, a can opener, no matter what. You got to have some knives. Uh, you got to have a spatula. I mean, you got this in your home. If you're at home, living at home, this is stuff you should all have. You just get a box, you throw it on there, and you're ready to go camping. That's what you would do if you went camping. I do like to keep a big knife. This is kind of a bread knife. It's heavily serrated, and it cuts... Uh, it cuts through things pretty well. I like those. I always keep extra lighters. Uh, I do keep extra lighters. The cheap ones actually work best, oddly, I think. Um, I keep uh, scrubbies. You know, you're going to clean sometimes. Not very often do I actually clean. I will use a big one of these, but I rarely use one of those. And, of course, I do keep... Um, a set of uh, measuring cups on hand because I do occasionally have to measure things. Not very often, but often enough that I'm going to keep them on hand. This is just the stuff you've got in your kitchen and you're using. There's no difference between using it here and using it there. So here's all, this is just the standard stuff that I keep and you're going to have and you're going to keep them too. It's no big, it's not the slightest big deal. Now, how many pots and pans and what kind? Now, there's no one answer for this. Everyone is different. Everyone cooks differently. Everyone has different issues with safety. Uh, some would not use aluminum under any conditions. Some would not use Teflon or nonstick coatings under any conditions, stainless steel or cast iron. Um, cast iron is too heavy. I don't carry cast iron. Um, but I know many of you do and will, and that's great. I encourage you to carry whatever works for you. We're all individuals. We all do what we individually feel like works for us. And that if it works for you, I'm all in favor of you doing it. Um, here's what I'm doing. This is my pots and pans. They're all nested. They fit under this shelf. Everything, my whole kitchen is in this little shelf unit. I'll start with the uh, smallest. So uh, here's a, a uh, just a standard, you know, I, it's, it's Teflon. I'm a big fan of Teflon. I use Teflon. Uh, it's just a standard old one-quart pot. Now this, it, I will make cans of chili, canned stew, canned soup, and I will use this on, uh, on the stove. And, of course, you have a lid because it's going to cook faster if you use the lid. And so it's just a standard pot. Uh, it's easier to clean. Now I do carry a larger pot. I do make, you know, I'll make something like spaghetti or hamburger helper or some of those things. So I do carry a larger pot. This is just another standard, you know, I mean, you've all seen these before. Uh, I like Teflon. Uh, there is a health, there's a real health risk. I'm not denying that. With Teflon, it's uh, it's not eating the stuff. It's, it's the stuff is inert. You can eat the and a little bit will flake off and so little that I, that's not even an issue. The health risk is fumes. These things put out a fume, which is proven, has been proven to be cancerous. It only puts out the fume under high heat. So if you always have a surf something on it so the surface doesn't get above, I think it's like six, 600 degrees. Uh, I'm, not a, I'm not an expert. Do your own research, decide for your own self if this is safe. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm telling you this is what I think and what I do. Uh, and so if you just keep it covered, it won't get that hot. It'll get two, three hundred degrees on, a, on I think, on a, um, a stove. So I carry these two things for a bigger meal, spaghetti. I will make spaghetti. I will have friends over. I'll make spaghetti for a group, uh, a pot, a big pot of beans, whatever. Uh, and a small one, 
and why why not just the one? This one will do everything. Uh, so why not just one? Just the one big one will do all the jobs I want done. Because it's harder to clean up, it takes more fuel, and uh, if I do put a, a can of chili in here, it can be done really quick. And also what I would like to do, what I like to do is I make egg sandwiches, and I will just uh, spray this with uh, Pam, cooking spray, nonstick cooking spray, and then break two eggs in here, scramble them just a little bit, and, and, and then cook that, and then turn it, and there I've got a, an egg sandwich. So I use this for that purpose as well. Uh, to me, it's worth carrying it. It weighs almost nothing. Um, and I, it's worth carrying both. At some point, I might give up. Seems like I'm not cooking spaghetti and big meals hardly ever. It might be time to get rid of this, but we'll see. Uh, but my mom bought a set of these. And when I, you know, I spent a whole bunch of time with my mom while she's been on, uh, she's had some health problems. And I love this thing. It is better than anti stick, and there's no Teflon. It's just uh, a ceramic coating that looks coppery, so it really isn't copper, is what I'm told. But it's copper looking, so we can call it copper, can't we? Uh, and so I love this thing. Now I'll make, uh, I can make easily make two or four grilled cheese sandwiches if I have friends over. I can make four hamburgers in here. I love the way that four hamburgers fit inside. If I'm making hamburger helper, it cooks in here. You can make almost anything in here. I'm a big fan of this. I really love this. And somewhere I took out and have the, the lid for it. So uh, I like this. I like this a lot. So I've eliminated Teflon. I don't think ceramic has any of the health issues that these other things have. And when I store it, I don't want to store them and have them uh, scratch each other to pieces. So I just put a, uh, I put something like this in here. Of course, you got to have, you know, you got to have uh, uh, mitts and hot plates, and so those go in here, and this goes in here, and I got to have one in here too. So I don't want my, uh, I don't want my Teflon getting all scratched up. And again, I understand if you hate Teflon, and you're going to write in and tell me I'm going to die because I use Teflon. I do have done the research. It is health. It is unhealthy. And um, I understand all of that. So then that goes in here, and I know it's not going to scratch it up. And then the lids go in there, and it goes underneath. So that's my pots and my pans. I used to cook every day. I had a menu that I'd planned out for the week and the month, and uh, made sure I had the, the foods on hand for it. Uh, but I've stopped doing that now with a microwave. I do most of my cooking microwave. Now, one thing I've left out here, there are other options, and in the past I've carried them. A pressure cooker is a superb tool. If you like, if you're willing to do the cooking and make uh, beans and rice, you can, you can live so cheaply on beans and rice. Or if you buy a really cheap roast and you put it in a pressure cooker and pressure cook it, it will come out of there falling apart. It will use less fuel. It will cook faster. Uh, pressure cookers are, it, you learn how to use them and you handle them right. They're 100% safe. There was a period of time after World War II when metal was so hard to find that uh, they made really cheap bad ones and they got a bad reputation as blowing up and hurting people. And that's not true anymore. Today they're made to high standards and they're completely safe and they are a phenomenal tool. I don't have one anymore. I've had one and I've used it. Uh, I just don't want to spend that much of my life cooking, um, so I don't. But if you are willing, if you're willing to buy a good one or two quart pressure cooker, make your own beans and rice and, uh, and your own grains, cook your own grains for breakfast, and you can save a lot of money and eat really well for really, really cheap. So I'm a big fan of pressure cookers. Now, I don't, I hate doing dishes. Okay, let's talk about doing dishes. 99% of my dishes are washed with a roll of paper towel and a, uh, a spray bottle. So how am I gonna clean this? Uh, here's how I do my dishes. I would, I would uh, first I would just wipe out all, all of the excess that you can. You know, you can get out probably 90% of it, just wiping it down good. It's not gonna be clean, but it's gonna be washed down really good. Um, basics done, and then I would do 
a quick spray like that. Keep at it. So a second one now. Then it's still not going to be clean yet. I don't think so. I got. The, I, I only buy the. Um, I only buy brownie towel with the uh, any towel, but I buy brownie, and it has the two. So that's a smaller one. So I'm not wasting so much. I'll probably use three of these. No more than four of these to get uh, to get anything clean. So one more time with water. You know, you can see it's just a spray. I, mean, I can cook dishes with a quart of water like this for a month. This just uses no water. Again, just wiping it out. That's all I'm doing here. Just, just taking it and wiping it out. Now, it's probably clean. Um, if you don't use it again for a day or two or three, germs don't live well outside of, out, you know, out exposed to the air. And so the germs are going to die. If there's anything in there, it's going to die. And now, then I would use a, a final... Uh, antiseptic and in the past I have used vinegar I have used rubbing alcohol and they are both very good um, I now I have a friend now who buys the cheapest vodka that she can fills a spray bottle so she'll have a spray bottle of water and a spray bottle of vodka and then she will spray it all with vodka and it, again a quart will last you I don't know how long a quart lasts I it, it's, it lasts so long that I've never been able to keep one and measure how long. I guess I could write it down. I'll lose a piece of paper before it'll empty. Uh, it would last a long time. It's just one quick skirt, squirt, and then you, uh, you let it sit in there and do its job, and then you do a final, uh, again, just a final wipe down of all the, al of the vodka. Or vinegar. I know people who do uh, hydrogen peroxide and vinegar. They do uh, vinegar and then hydrogen peroxide. And I guess there's uh, actually uh, been some research that shows the two together are quite a good antiseptic. Um, or a, a rubbing alcohol, but I didn't like the smell of rubbing alcohol, so I never used it. I stopped using it. Here's what I'm doing right now. It's a Clorox Anywhere Hard Surface Cleaner. And uh, the idea behind it is it's bleach. It's all it is. It's just a, a set percentage of bleach that is safe for anything. They say it is safe, uh, kills 99.9 cents .9 of back, percent of bacteria, but it's gentle enough to be used around kids, pets, and food. Uh, so if, if, when you, if you have a baby tray and you, the last thing you do is wipe it, spray it with this, it's going to be completely dead, uh, inert, of all, kill all the germs and then it's not going to hurt the baby at all if there is a residue. So then I would just, uh, if I'm, especially if I've cooked meat or eggs, uh, things that are going to be, can really be dangerous, I will give it a final squirt. And then again, just another piece of paper towel, just another piece of paper towel and wipe it all out. And it's done. And so I've been doing the spray bottle, I can't even remember, at least 10 years more than 10 years, and it's, I've never had the slightest stomach distress from food, from not cleaning, in any way, shape, or form. It's just worked really, really well for me. It's something I highly recommend. It takes, it, it eliminates, it just essentially takes this bad job away of washing dishes and uses virtually no water. I mean, ounces per, per dishwashing. So there you have it. I mean, it's just, it really is so simple. Uh, to live in a van and cook. All righty, I'll stop there. I hope this helps. If it did, like us on YouTube, hit that uh, thumbs up button, and subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you later.